Howdy, 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 my name is Anacha Sasuke. Welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. The actual thing, not sidestep for once. Um, in the last episode, I believe we read uh, Nevada and Extraterrestrial and uh, Overpopulation, the Garden Gnome, and Bugsy. Because I remember the Garden Gnome. I just don't really remember any of the rest of them. Unless this one was the one that was Area 51. So next up would be Resize It, Absence of Shark, The Semi-Visible Man, Infectious Censorship, and... Penan... Penanglon? Penan... Penanglon? Probably that. Uh, so, resize it. Well, it's safe. SCP-1056 is to be kept in a 50 centimeter cubed 10 digit combination safe with biometric confirmation when not being used for testing. So, I guess fingerprints or eyes. Uh, only personnel involved in 1056 research and testing may have access to the object. All tests require prior authorization by the site director or, and it says, and by a research staff with level 3 clearance or higher. Tests on living subjects must be conducted in a secure testing facility, meeting level 2 containment guidelines to prevent modified subjects from escaping. All objects altered by 1056 must be kept in Class E ablative storage for 48 hours after transformation. The creation of any object or organism over 200 kilograms must be approved by the site director. Description. SCP-1056 superficially resembles a burnished chrome kitchen timer with numbers ranging from 0.25 to 4 and with and an activation button on the right hand side. A 1 by 1.25 meter wire mesh platform is connected to the device by a 3 meter insulated molyb molybdenum carbide wire coated with that disulfide and an unidentified organometallic complex. The mesh is capable of folding into a 27 by 35 centimeter square. When the device is set to a number and the si side button is pressed, any objects in direct contact with the wire mesh will scale up or down in size by a factor corresponding to the number setting. The device was recovered by SCP personnel following reports of an unusual behavior among students at Blank High School in Blank, Pennsylvania. School officials began an investigation when teachers reported that a number of students were behaving unusually. Specifically, the students displayed significantly impaired language skills, abnormally poor attention span, long-term memory, and impulse control. Medical examination of the students revealed the presence of numerous vascular and nervous system abnormalities. <clears throat> Foundation personnel recovered the device at the home of one of the students who had presumably been using it for recreational purposes. The only indicator of the manufacture or distribution of the device is a 4 by one centimeter imprint on the bottom of the device leading, reading the factory. Of course it does. All electronic components are of generic, generic make. So what, what did it do to them? The manner in which objects are resized appears to follow a set, a set of rules that varies depending upon the complexity and function of the object. Simple inanimate objects such as minerals, metals, and plastic scale up or down to precisely to four significant figures, the scale indicated without any regard to molecular or microscopic scale. For instance, a 5 centimeter stainless steel cube on the 3 setting scaled up to a 15.1.01 centimeter cube that was indistinguishable in molecular composition from the original cube, but that differed on a microstructural structural scale level, whatever. Average grain size on the two cubes was identical, and individual grains on the small cube did not scale up to the large cube. 1056 appears to scale complex devices and biological organisms with some attempt to maintain the functional properties of the object or organism. For instance, the microprocessors of electronic devices are often modified if the altered scale would result in non-functional transistor gates, insufficient power, or excessive heat buildup. Devices that have been scaled down often have a reduced number of transistors and may demonstrate floating point errors. While all but the most complex mechanical objects scale relatively well, electronics are often rendered non-functional when scaled below 0.5 and above 3.00 of their original scale. Living organisms that have been resized by 1056 retain their basic an anatomical structure but often experience significant reorganization of the circulatory, pulmonary, and especially nervous system. Cell size and composition remain identical to that seen in the original organism, but the number of cells inc increases or decreases proportionately to the change in volume. The only exception to this observation is the nervous system, where the average neuron may increase or decrease up to 25% in linear size, thus potentially becoming slightly under half or over twice the original volume, with negligible effects on the function. 
Interestingly, 1056 appears to split the difference with single-celled organisms, slightly altering the average cell size and also altering the overall cell production. Humans can be resized by 1056 as low as 0.5 and as high as 1.75 with minimal change in function. Shrinking humans often results in increased uh, folding of the cerebral cortex, a reduction in average neuron volume, and a decrease in white matter. This appears to preserve cognitive function down to 0.5. Attempts to scale humans below results in a substantial decrease in cognitive function, language comprehension, and short and long-term memory, indicating that this is the minimal size required for human-like intelligence in a mammalian brain. Humans scaled above 1.25 demonstrate slowed reaction speeds, a reported increase in creativity, and substantial improvements to long-term memory. Scaling beyond 1.5 greatly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, aneurysm, and renal failure. The scaling of any organism beyond 3 is highly discouraged. The mechanism by which it institutes these changes in scale is currently unknown. High-speed video footage of transformations up to 20,000 FPS indicate that the transformation is nearly instantaneous as there is no apparent transition between forms. Interestingly, there, is no apparent, there are no apparent effects of atmospheric displacement even when the volume created or destroyed is very large. In a minority, roughly 8% of cases, an object altered by the device experiences a material instability and begins to undergo atomic decay within 36 hours of alteration. Living organisms and other objects within, with relatively low metal content have a considerably lower, roughly 3%, chance of undergoing decay. This decay produces significant heat and energy, approximately 150 gigajoules per kilogram, around six orders of magnitude less than typical matter-antimatter decay, but sufficiently high to render frequent or high mass transformations inadvisable. Um, let's check a couple of the experiments. Uh, TI-30XA calculator. They tried raising and beating. Okay. Functional 0.75 scale calculator. It was successfully returned to one scale using the 1.33 setting. Repeated transformation between the two does not appear to alter basic function, appearance, or internal composition. The same calculator from 0 0.25 to 4. Non-functional calculator. The power button turns it on, but is incapable of performing accurate calculations. Most result in either incorrect or an error signal. Return of the calculator to normal size using 4 did not return function to it. Internal analysis indicates loss of fine details, including transistor number and LCD resolution in the device. A 1 kilogram bar of 22 karat gold bullion, setting 4. A 64 kilogram bar of 21 karat gold bullion with minor molybdenum impurities. As often as I've seen that word come up in ESO, I never really thought about how to say it. A 35 1 ounce, 30, sorry, 35 1 ounce silver eagle bullion coins, setting 2. 99 bullion coins weighing 80 grams apiece. Yeah. The increase in total mass seemed to be evenly split between blah blah blah. A human subject, 175 meters tall, centimeters tall, and weighing 90 kilograms. Setting 2. The subject scaled up approximately twofold to 341 centimeters tall and weighing 719 kilograms. Mental and physiological functions appear normal. Reaction times are slightly slower than normal, and required caloric intake is only 50% of what would be expected, given the nearly eightfold increase in mass. The subject performs extremely well on long-term memory tests, perhaps owing to increased brain mass. Resting heart rate is 45 beats per minute and systolic pressure is 165 mmHg versus 132 before the transformation. Six days later, the subject experienced vascular irregularities leading to moderate swelling in the distal limbs, followed by intermittent bouts of confusion, spotted vision, blurred vision, and tinnitus. The subject died from respiratory arrest caused by a massive brainstem aneurysm 22 days after the transformation. Researchers note, the subject's symptoms suggest the rapid onset of complications consistent with cases of extreme acromegaly giantism. Our projections indicate that most humans would tolerate scales of up to 1.33 or slightly above re relatively well. And then they took a lady and shrunk her. She scaled down approximately twofold to 81 centimeters tall and weighing 7 kilograms. Mental and physiological functions appear normal. There was no significant difference in tests of general intelligence, short and long term memory and spatial reasoning administered before and after the transformation. MRI scans indicate the increased folding in the cerebral contact cortex and an overall decrease in white matter. Resting heart rate is 98 BPM and systolic pressure is 88 mghg versus, or mmhg versus 115 before the transformation. The subject's cardiovascular system was slightly simplified in a manner seen similar to that seen as smaller primates. 
28 days after the transformation, no obvious health or behavioral anomalies were observed, and subject was returned to her original size. Okay, lady from that previous test. Oh, when they were 81 centimeters tall, setting two. They scaled back up to the original size. The functions appear normal. The cognitive test indicated slight but significant improvement in short and long term memory and a slight decrease in reaction time. It's hypothesized that these cognitive irregularities could compound or change with repeated use of the device. The cardiovascular system appears modified from the shrunken version to support the larger body, but is not identical to the original vascular pattern, indicating that the device improvises the solutions to physiological problems anew with each transformation rather than reverting to old forms. They tried a culture of E. coli, and they used setting 4. It, the petri dish scaled up to 52 centimeters and the bacteria colonies increased in volume roughly 64 fold while maintaining their original morphology. Microscopic analysis of the colonies reveals that the average size of the bacteria had increased by a factor of 2.2 to 7 microns in length with the remaining increase in mass owing to an increased number of bacterial cells. Blah, blah, blah researchers note. Uh, genetic tests indicate that 1056 restructures organisms on both a physiological physiological and genetic level. This represents a degree of abstract sophistication inconsistent with the simple digital and mechanical workings observed within the device. Okay, experiment 9, they tried to use it on itself. Result data expunged. From now on, all experiments on this device must be approved by the senior investigator and then submitted to me. The responsible parties have been officially disciplined and removed from the project. We're lucky that the effects weren't much, much worse. What would have happened if the entire universe had doubled in size? So did they increase the building? The world? What did they... Like, I imagine if they increased the... Th if they doubled the size of the thing that doubles the size of things, that's probably bad. Anyway, the absence of shark. It, which is also safe. It's interesting to get something safe from the factory. Probably because it doesn't do anything if you don't touch it. Also, seeing these ads here has just made me realize that the SCP-001 part of the website didn't get ads, did it? Just the main place. Uh, get out of here. SCP-1057 is kept in a reinforced glass containment tank 4 meters tall, 15 meters long, and 9 meters wide, filled with water which has been treated to replicate a, temper a temperate ocean environment. Is it just an invisible shark? Uh, see document 1057-H22 for specifications. Vegetation in the habitat is to be maintained twice a week. See H19 for specifications. It is forbidden to enter 1057's tank for 30 minutes before and after feeding. It is to be fed 5 kilograms of raw meat and fish three times a day. Once every four days, this meat and fish is to be injected with non-toxic fluorescent dyes. See document G4 for its specifications. The tank is to be lit with ultraviolet lamps. Description 1057 is an animate empty space 5 meters long in the shape of an adult tiger shark. Uh, Galio Cerda Cer Cerdo? Curvier? Cuvier. It does not appear to have any mass, however it displaces water by an unknown mechanism. The refractive index is approximately that of air, which makes it partially visible when submerged in salt water. As well, its anti-shadow is discernible under bright light. Experiments involving the insertion of inanimate objects into its body have revealed that there is nothing there. Further, however, further experiments along these lines are contraindicated, as this triggers extremely aggressive behavior on the part of 1057. 1057's behavior has been assessed by Foundation ichthyologists as being within normal parameters for an adult tiger shark. Any food consumed disappears, with the exception of the non-digestible fluorescent dyes, which are regularly added to 57's food to facilitate monitoring its behavior. These dyes persist within 57, 1057 for 5 to 9 days and outline a digestive and circulatory system. Several hypotheses to explain how this is possible when there is no, when there is manifestly no actual shark present have been suggested, tested, and disproved. See Archive 1057 N4. Acquisition Log 1057 was captured in the blank public swimming pool and redacted, where it killed two swimmers and mutilated the lifeguard. Five people were killed in the ensuing panic. Foundation personnel embedded in the local hospital reported the incident. Retrieval agents arrived on the scene and 1057 was eventually taken into custody. During forensic examination of the swimming pool premises, 1057 K24 was discovered on the, Bolton staff, the staff bulletin board. 
Although K-24 is handwritten, no fingerprints were found on it. Document K-24. Panic means the, uh, that the idea of a shark can be more dangerous than an actual shark. It can even be more dangerous than no shark at all. Are we cool yet? Isn't that one of the, um... The other... Places of interest or whatever? That didn't do what I thought it was going to do. But I'm pretty sure the Are We Cool Yet is another one of the... Things like the Broken God or whatever. I've read about them, but I don't remember their names. So I guess they're not cool yet. Um, this is another safe one. SP-1058 is to be kept in humanoid containment wing 2 of Site-17. Due to the nature of the subject's anomalous behavior, the floor of the cell is to be covered with a 1, one centimeter of sand to be replenished every two weeks. What was it called? The Semi-Visible Man. Uh, the, the cell is to be lit by only a single light source at all times. The source should be mounted in the center of the ceiling with redundant backups in case of failure. Description. 1058 appears to be an approximately 60-year-old human male, uh, possibly from the southern United States. The subject was recovered from a Marshall Carter and Dark Limited distribution center in blankety blank. Subject is fully sentient and capable of speech as well as interaction with physical objects. 1058's anomalous properties manifest as a total invisibility to all forms of direct observation. Despite this, the subject does, not, does cast a shadow. In addition, 1058 shadow causes the surface or object which it falls upon to alter its appearance towards that of the subject. The speed and mechanism of the process appears to be dependent on the density, state, and other physical characteristics of the substance the shadows, subject's shadow has been cast on. Sand and other granulated or powdery substances seem to be the quickest affected by 1058, with metals and other hard materials being among the slowest. Any object attached to the subject also comes under its effect, becoming invisible to direct observation and alter the appearance of the effect of the subject's shadow on the material. Anything removed from the subject becomes visible, and this includes clothes and accessories, as well as pieces of hair, blood samples, and other bodily effects. Addendum Test Log 1 uh, Starting uh, standard they blah 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 blah. blah. Testing environment, a 5x5x5 five by five by five testing cell covered in one centimeter of sand for the duration. They were placed in a chair in the center. At the start, all but a single light was turned off until the conclusion of the test. A visible ridge of sand appears to form on these, on the sand on the side of 1058 opposite the lamp in the sh shape of the subject with his arms by his side. He's instructed to lift his arms above his head. Subject complies. The sand ridge is observed to tumble following the movement of the uh, subject. The affected area began to gain a more detailed likeness of the subject regardless of movement. Subject is instructed to wave his arms rapidly. Subject complies before returning his arms to original position. The sand remains stationary. The affected area ceases movement as the hypo hypothesized maximum level of detail is reached, being little more than a silhouette with creases at the ankles, waist, wrist, neck, and hairline. Test ended. Conclusion: The subject's effect on the material is projected on the, 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 the effect on the material it is projected onto is preceded by an unmeasured amount of lag before the material is altered to reflect movement. Test two. Same area. The start at the start, the light source was placed so that it shined upon 1058 from a different angle. Surface of the metal and the subject shadow begin to show signs of corrosion and rust. The subject fell asleep. Portion of the metal rem affected remains in the same besides gaining additional details slower than before, contrary to the slight changes in the subject's posture. The subject is woken up and instructed to get out of the chair. The chair is observed to change color in accordance to the subject's immediate shadow. The colored chair gradually returns to its previous state. The corrosion and rust on the metal remains. No other anomalous properties observed. Test ended. Inclusion. The speed of the effect appears to be based on the subject's state. The duration of the effect on the material also appears to be based on the mechanism by which it is affected, not only the physical properties of the material. Test 3. Date redacted. Have th okay, the dates have been redacted the whole time. Standard, standard room. Uh, D21894 instructed to stand in the shadow for duration. They report a buzzing sensation on the area of his body covered by the shadow. 1058 expresses a wish to sit down. Approximately two seconds later, 21894 uh, appears to be repeating the statement, but does not vocalize. 1058 instructed to try moving one of his arms. Subject complies. Data expunged. Test ended. 
Test conclusion data expunged. D21894 expired several hours after the conclusion of the test. Okie dokie. I wonder what they had to do. Infectious censorship. Is the whole article just going to be blacked out? Well, it's Euclid. Uh, documents known to be written by personnel infected with 1059 are to be rewritten by uninfected researchers. Personnel known to be infected with 1059 are to be treated with countermimetic therapy and removed from duty until they show no further signs of infection. They are to afterwards be monitored for signs of relapse. Individuals outside the foundation found to be carrying 1059 are to be treated with class A amnestics if practical or otherwise removed from positions where they can potentially infect others. SCP-1059 is a mimetic compulsion to hide, censor, or otherwise obscure information when communicating with others. It is most prevalent in those already dealing with classified or sensitive material. Infected subjects will, when conveying information, find that apparently random pieces of information will seem disproportionately important. This information will be treated as though it is at the highest level of classification the writer is familiar with. They will do so even after the information has been shown to be relatively harmless or even vital to those reading the resulting material. 1059 is spread by reading material, infected material, or discussion with infected individuals. Those most at risk are those still learning classification procedures. Infection can be easily prevented by maintaining a solid grounding in the rules and regulations governing cl classified material within the organization. 1059 was discovered at the National Security Agency when a discrepancy was noticed by Agent Jameson, a foundation operative embedded in NSA headquarters in Fort Meade, Maryland. Documents originating from certain offices were being classified as top secret regardless of their actual content. After other possible causes were ruled out, further investigations showed several individuals were infected with a previously unknown memetic agent, which was eventually designated 1059. Addendum 1. Improper handling of the infected materials led to an outbreak of 1059 within the Foundation. It has been difficult to track thus far, and a full audit of Foundation documents and staff is pending. So far, 17 fatalities can be directly attributed to vital information expunged from containment procedures. Wait, so is this why there's a bunch of random articles that are redacted in weird spots? Or did they write this one to try to explain that? Because if, if those are connected, that's cool. This document has demonstrated signs of 1059 infection and has been expanded to meet Foundation standards. See, A for previous version. <laughs> They are to be treated with redacted. They are afterwards to be data expunged. They are data expunged. Spread by redacted. Confession can be prevented by data expunged. It was discovered at the blank blank blank. When discrepancy noticed by agent blank. Embedded in the blank headquarters and blank blank blank. Improper handling of affected materials led to data expunged. I guess the, the last revision was them unexpunging it. And that brings us to Penangalin, 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 it's Euclid, so we got three safes and two Euclids. So, SCP-1060 is to be contained in a humanoid observation slash detention cell at all times. During subject's daytime cycle, the subject is to be provided with food items from the Site-33 cafeteria. During nighttime cycle, they are to be nourished with 0.8 kilograms of human placental material and provide it with a basin of at least 4 liters of rice wine vinegar. What? Description, they are a human female of Southeast Asian ethnicity, answering to the name of Adila Blank. They are fluent in the Malay language and somewhat converse, conversant in Malaysian English. In interviews during Soda's daytime cycle, subject has indicated that she is 22 years of age, is trained as an obstetrics nurse and is unaware of any usual a unusual aspects of her physiology. In these interviews, subject has expressed a lack of awareness of her nighttime cycle, physiology, or activities and protests that she merely sleeps at night. During the daytime cycle, subject frequently demands to be released from containment or to be permitted to contact family members. During the daytime cycle, subject appears and behaves as a normal human female. During nighttime cycle, which generally begins within 80 minutes after the subject falls asleep, the subject's head and internal body organs, heart, lungs, liver, and much of the digestive system and gut detach from the rest of the body with a certain sudden jerking motion, leaving a hole around the base of the subject's neck. Subject and subject's head and organs then levitate by a means of unknown process and freely float around the containment cell while, while the subject's tongue, which increases to approximately 25 centimeters in length during this stage, flicks at the air in the manner of a snake. 
The remainder of the body remains lying in a resting position. The subject's upper and lower canine teeth also increase in length and sharpness during this stage. Under no normal containment circumstances, subject will consume the provided placental material using the dangling lengths of gut in the manner of prehensile limbs to lift the material to the subject's mouth. Following the feeding, the subject will dip into the dip the exposed organs into the vinegar, whereupon the organs shrink so that they can be stuffed back into the subject's body cavity. The head then reattaches to the body, leaving no visible seam or scar. Okay. <clears throat> Addendum SCP-1060.01a. Following Incident 1, no pregnant females are to be admitted into the containment chamber during 1060's nighttime cycle. During Incident 1, researcher Marilyn Blank, who at that time was in her second trimester of pregnancy, entered the containment chamber during the nighttime cycle to top off the basin of vinegar. Immediately upon 1060's detection of Ms. Blank's presence in the chamber, 1060 flew at her at a great rate of speed, then used Lancer Prehensile Gut to bind and immobilize. Such then bit the researcher in the abdomen and consumed the fetus in situ, together with most of the rest of the uterus and its contents. Does that word mean something? Does, does that mean- does, is this a thing? What is this? A nocturnal vampiric entity of Malay ghost myths. Its name comes from the word tangle, which means to remove or take off. There's a whole lot of stuff about it. There's cryptids and things. The what fandom? The cryptid fandom. Crypt. Okay. <clears throat> well then. I feel like there's probably people who knew through the whole video what that was as they just watched me struggle to say it and were just waiting for me to find out what it was. Well, now I know what it is and that is one of the most terrifying Euclid things this website has had. I don't know why it wouldn't have occurred to me that there'd be cryptids in here, considering the first thing in the thousands is freaking Bigfoot. But, that being said, that about does it for this episode of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. And the next one, we're going to be checking out the accidental car and S Magazine Time. Friar von Swartzwald, Wald, Swartzwald, Candle Ring, and Self Emulating Books. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you need to do either one of those things. If you'd like to click the bell, you can do that as well. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.